Hello everyone, hope you've been keeping well. So it's been a while since we discussed the stochastic differential equations. In this video, what we're going to do is to discuss the Eater's Lemma for the simple Poisson process. As you would have seen, we have discussed the Eater's Lemma for the diffusion processes and by diffusion I really mean the Brownian and its various transformations that we define via STEs. So we're going to do a similar thing for the jump processes now. And in this video, we're just going to focus on the simple Poisson process, which just represents the number of jumps and time t, and then some of its transformations. We're going to discuss cases of increasing complexity, but it's not going to be too complex because we're just going to be using the Taylor series and DT precision types arguments so it's going to be relatively simple and it's just kind of introductory video in this series okay right so we have seen the Poisson process before so it represents the number of jumps over time t we will move t to the subscript because these brackets when you wrap them inside the brackets then it could look quite complicated right and now we consider a function of this n so this function we will assume is a continuous and differentiable though that doesn't mean that it won't work in other cases like we have seen for Eto's lemma and the Saber derivation that it can work for functions which are not differentiable in the traditional sense. But we're gonna be keeping it simple, right? And we are interested in the differential of this f, which means the change in the value of this function over a small interval delta t. So we can write it as the function value at time t plus delta t and its value at time t because n is the only argument, right? Now this n at t plus dt, we can write it as the sum of the current value of the process plus the change in the value of the process over dt. So we can make this simple substitution. And we then know from the properties of the Poisson process that for a small interval, dn can take only two values, one and zero. So we can use this property to write the first term as the sum of two orthogonal or complementary terms, assuming I'm allowed to misuse the term slightly here. So if dn equals one, then this term will equal one and 1 minus dn will equal 0. So we would just get the value of the function when n is incremented by 1. And if dn equals 0, then the contribution of the first term will be 0, and the contribution from the second term will be 100%. So we will just get the value of the function at n, because no jump has occurred, right? And we have this f here. So we need to subtract f here as well and we can get rid of the clutter. Now in this term we can just multiply through to get rid of the brackets so we get f of nt and then f of nt multiplied by dnt and we can make this replacement. Now this f appears with the plus and minus signs so they cancel each other. And we can factor out dn and we have the Eto's lemma for a function of the simple Poisson process. So it's the value of the function when n is increased by 1 minus the current value of the function times dn. So if dn equals 1 then df will just be the change in the value of the function because of the one jump and if dn equals 0 then df will equal 0 as well. So quite simple. Right, so let's move to a function of n and t now. And of course, we are interested in the differential. Again, we can write it as the change in the value of the function. So now f is a function of t as well, so that's why we have the t plus dt in the second argument. And again, we can write the n at t plus dt as the value of the process plus the change in the value of the process and we can make this substitution and again dn can take the value 1 or 0 so the first term again we can write it as the sum of two terms one with dnt and another one with 1 minus dnt 
So if a jump occurs, then dnt will equal one and then one minus dnt will be zero. So we'll just get the function value, evaluated at n increased by the number of jump, which is one. And if dnt equals zero, which means there is no jump, so the first term will be zero and the second one will just give us the whole value, but the time has changed by delta t. And then we have minus f, and we can get rid of the clutter. Now we're gonna take this term and expand it using Taylor series in one variable t. So the contribution from higher order terms will be zero because as dt becomes small, dt square will be zero. So the dt squared is equal to zero in the same sense that we discuss in the Ito's series. And we can do the same with the second expression. So this one will get expanded around n and t. And the first one in the original equation gets multiplied by dn. So we can multiply the right hand side by dn. And this one appears with one minus dn. So we multiply the right hand side by one minus dn and we can make the replacement. Now we get rid of the brackets. So we multiply the two terms inside the first brackets by dn. And then in the second, we multiply both terms by one and then by minus dn. And we have this minus f. Again, we have the f appearing with plus and minus signs, so they cancel each other. Now dt times dn, just like dt times db equals zero. We're gonna cover this in a separate video, though it's exact replica of the derivation we use when showing that dt times db equals zero. So this term will become zero. And then this one also has dt times dn, so it goes to zero. And if we rearrange, we get the Eater's lemma for a function of n and t. And for the final case, let's say, instead of a function of n, we have a function of x, where x is defined by this SDE. So dx is a kind of transformation of dn. And let's say we have a function of x and t. And of course, we are interested in the differential. Again, we can write it as the change in the value of the process. And we know dx is given by this expression, so we can substitute for dx. And dn, again, can equal one or zero, which means we can use the same logic to write the first term as the sum of two terms one if the jump occurs and the second if no jump occurs the only difference compared to the previous case is the jump size is equal to v instead of one and we have the drift term in x as well and then we have this minus f now we take the f in the first term and expand it using taylor series in two variables now so we expand it around x plus v and t. So it's similar to the previous case, except that we have v instead of one because the jump size is now variable. And then derivative with the first argument times mu delta t. So mu times delta t is just the distance from the base value around which we are expanding in the first argument. And then we will have the derivative with respect to t times dt. And then this expression is multiplied by dn. So we multiply the right hand side by dn as well. And as we mentioned before, dt times dn equals zero. So this term will disappear and so will this one. And this simplifies a lot. So we can make the replacement and then move to the second term. Again, we apply the Taylor series in two variables. So derivative with respect to x times mu delta t. And then derivative with respect to t times dt. And this term is multiplied by one minus dn. So we multiply the right hand side by one minus dn. 
now dt times dn equals zero so we can get rid of the one minus dn and this term and the last term and then in the first term we can get rid of the bracket so we multiply f by one and then by minus dn and now we can get rid of the clutter and make the replacement again f appears with plus and minus so they cancel each other and we can just rearrange and we have the Eto's lemma for a function of x where x is a transformation of the simple Poisson right so in summary then if f is a function of n then its differential is just equal to the change in the value of the function if one jump occurs times dn if f is a function of n and t then its differential is again equal to the change in the value of the function if one jump occurs times dn plus the differential with respect to dt and if f is a function of x and t where x is defined by this SDE then its differential is again equal to the change in the value of the function assuming a jump of size v occurs times dn plus the derivative with respect to t times dt plus the derivative with respect to x times the drift rate of x please do give a thumbs up if you would like to see similar videos so i hope you enjoyed the video and i look forward to seeing you in the next